this country belongs to the people. The message inscribed on this brass plaque, a symbol of protest, cemented into the ground. For months now, Thais have been calling for reform of the monarchy and political system. But this weekend's demonstration was the biggest in years. Tens of thousands gathered in Bangkok and stayed to protest throughout the night. I want to see changes in the most meaningful way, a bigger change than before, which will take into account people's opportunities, education and our right to speak the truth, so we can question and discuss things we're not supposed to talk about. There's a chance we'll be successful with our demands, but we'll have to wait and see. If the protesters are still committed to fixing the constitution, then the government won't be able to ignore them forever. The protesters are growing bolder. On Sunday, they handed Royal Guard police a letter setting out their demands. Particularly sensitive is the call for royal reform, including limits to the king's powers. This has broken a taboo in Thailand, where criticizing the monarchy can be punished with up to 15 years in jail. King Vajiralongkorn is out of the country and spends most of his time in Europe. The royal palace has yet to comment on the weekend's protests. But the student activists driving the movement see them as a success. Today proves we are all human beings. We have the same red blood. We've proven that nobody bleeds blue blood. Protesters are calling for more rallies and a day's general strike. So far, the protests have been peaceful. But some fear the authorities could change tack and adopt a more forceful approach towards dissent. And our correspondent Florian Nush is following the story as for us in Bangkok. Florian, how significant are the scenes that have played out this weekend? Well, for everyone that knows Thailand and Thailand's often violent history, what we have seen over the last 24 hours or so is nothing short of revolutionary. Not only have we seen the biggest and longest protests since the last military coup in 2014, we have seen how those protesters have installed a plaque that basically says this is for the country and this square is for the people, not for the king, right on the royal field. So one cannot overstate the significance. We have seen how these protesters, in defiance of those draconian laws here in Thailand that ban uh, any criticism of the monarchy um, and it is punishable by up to 15 years in jail, they have marched to the, the palace grounds. They have only been stopped, um, you know, not far from it by the police, but they have given their demands to representatives of the authorities that they are actually uh, criticizing and they're protesting against. So this demonstration can be qualified as a huge success for the protesters. You speak of draconian measures uh, that are possible to take against protesters. And how are the authorities responding so far then? Well, overall, they have been quite lenient. Um, we had seen massive barricades being put up last night close to the government house, the seat of the government and the prime minister. Um, also, uh, massive blockades in front of the royal palace equipped with barbed wire. So that actually looked like a military zone. So the police basically have confined themselves to just making sure that these protesters would not storm these sensitive locations, but otherwise they have been pretty lenient. They have even accepted the petition that the protesters originally wanted to give to a member of the Privy Council as a representative of the palace. In the end, they negotiated that the head of Bangkok Metropolitan Police receives that document and he vowed to pass it on to the palace. We'll have to wait and see if that really happens. Well, looking forward, where can we expect these protests to go then? 
Well, Thailand might still be in or will probably be in for another very interesting, maybe even tense weeks. So the protesters declare today that they will convene again already next Thursday in front of parliament where a committee is supposed to set up to uh, discuss gradual reforms of the constitution that was drafted under the military regime. Um, and they have called for a general strike on October 14. So unless their demands will be met by then, they want to have a general strike in the whole country. And I don't really see their prime demands, namely the prime minister to step down to happen before then. So there will be some more interesting times ahead. Sounds like a real standoff. Florian Nusch in Bangkok, thanks so much.